Joining me now is Kara Hurst, Vice President of Worldwide Sustainability at Amazon. She leads sustainability efforts at Amazon across multiple areas spanning environmental and social sectors. And prior to this, she was CEO of the Sustainability Consortium, a global nonprofit working to help the consumer goods industry deliver more sustainable products. Kara, great to have you with us. I want to go back into that Sustainability Consortium, which as I understand it, Scientific American called it one of the top 10 world-changing ideas of 2012. And I go back and I want our audience to understand this, that as we're talking about sustainability and what Amazon did in COP26, which we'll get into, that you were one of the architects of this discussion when it was hard to do. And I'm just interesting, as, as time has moved on and as we've tried to make ESG mean something real, what are some of the insights you have of being one of the early pioneers of this, of this field? Well, thanks for having me today. I'm really excited for this conversation. Um, yeah, I've been in sustainability for a couple of decades now, and it has um, always been a very challenging field, although I think with a lot of the new technologies and solutions and um, ways of sharing information, particularly in the private sector that we've seen now, um, it's a really exciting time to be involved. And at Amazon, we have been taking all of that into account and moving very, very fast towards addressing the climate challenge. You know, you were just participating in uh, Glasgow in COP26. There were other firms that were lining up there. Um, what is Amazon doing in COP26? What are your impressions of that worldwide meeting and how real or not the steps taken there are to kind of deal with the realities of climate change in the world? Yeah, well, again, it's, it's exciting to see climate change at the top of everyone's agenda now. Um, it's a discussion around many of our kitchen tables. It is certainly um, anxiety producing in terms of what we see out there. And uh, we're running very, very fast at this. And it's great to be at a company like Amazon that is investing in this at a large scale. Um, one of the things that we choose to do is to use our scale and our speed um, to address the urgency of the climate challenge. So a couple of years ago, we started the Climate Pledge, which is a commitment to be net zero carbon by 2040. And when we did that, um, we made a couple of different investments. One is that we decided we were going to be powered by 100% renewable energy. And at the time, we marked that to 2030. Again, with the urgency, we've looked at that and thought, how can we pull that up? And we're now trying to achieve that by 2025. Uh, we placed the largest ever order of electric vehicles, 100,000 uh, electric delivery vans from a company called Rivian. And uh, we started the Climate Pledge Fund, which I can talk about. And so when you go to uh, a COP or these international convenings and think about what the role that the private sector can play, in addition to what we expect to see on uh, the contributions and the commitments from governments around the world, what we're trying to do is to bring solutions to some of those hard to abate sectors that we work in. And we're driving that work through bringing other companies together, sharing what we know through things like committing to the Climate Pledge, and then talking about how do we address uh, what's going on in aviation, in middle mile uh, transportation, in ocean freight. Um, and we've built a number of coalitions that we're really excited about. And so what we were doing at COP was working with those other companies, working across uh, the public sector, the private sector to bring together those coalitions um, and advance those ideas. So we have uh, coalitions like the LEAF Coalition, lowering emissions and accelerating forest finance, where we brought together governments, US, Norway, UK, as well as companies that come in. We committed over a billion dollars together um, to accelerate voluntary carbon markets at a very high standard. Um, we've brought together uh, coalitions in the aviation sector. Um, we brought together COZEV with the Aspen Institute, and we joined the First Movers Coalition and announced that at COP uh, with the US State Department and the World Economic Forum addressing eight hard to abate sectors. So really it's about moving forward now with this kind of coalition building. You know, I've, I've interviewed, I had the privilege of interviewing a lot of the CEOs at various partner firms you've had, like United Airlines or UPS or FedEx and others, you know, and all of them are, are in a way committing to various level of net zero emissions by a certain period of time. But I guess I'm sort of interested in, as you step forward, I'm going to ask you maybe an unfair question. There are other companies out there that have not yet, you know, gotten the mission, that are not, not necessarily in the camp. There's some countries that are more recalcitrant. There's some countries that feel like they didn't have the opportunity. I'm just interested in your insights and what are the best ways to bring along uh, others that are not yet convinced 
on, on climate targets, not yet. How do we turn what you've done into something that spreads to places there? Because if, you know, with, with all due respect, if we just do it within the terrain of the leadership you've shown, we still need to do more. We need to have other players. And I'm just wondering if you have insights into that. And that's actually a great question. And it's one of the reasons why we went forward with this commitment to be net zero 40, uh, net, net zero carbon by 2040, and then create it as a, as a coalition, as the climate pledge, because I think there needs to be more sharing of how companies are doing this. Look, these commitments are very big, they're bold, they're very, very difficult. And yet companies who make them are serious about achieving them. So if we want to be able to keep the planet you know, below 1.5 degrees warming, that we think the science that is coming forward in the IPCC is real and serious. We want to share and talk as much about how we're doing this and where the challenges lie as we can. We also need to involve our value chains. So with something like Ocean Freight, when we made a commitment uh, to that through First Movers and COSEV with Aspen, you know, we're saying we're signaling a demand signal to that we want more of that ocean freight run um, from renewable sources. We want ships that are out there run on uh, green ammonia or hydrogen um, and similar in the electric vehicle space. Right. We want companies producing and manufacturing all different kinds of vehicle types for us. And we want the electrification infrastructure to go along with that. So I think part of what we need to do is we need to focus on um, how these, what are the challenge, how companies are doing this and share more information with each other. And that's where something like the Climate Pledge, it can do that. So we're excited to see some of these companies in, in the cement industry, in the steel industry, in the aviation industry, where these are very difficult challenges and our progress will not be linear year to year. So getting started is really important. Investing in those early stage technologies and taking some risk in that also really important. Um, so we're doing that through our, our Climate Pledge Fund with companies like Zero Avia and Carbon Cure and Turn Tide, um, where we're saying, let's experiment, let's trial and test, let's share what we know, and let's kind of see if we can move faster together. Carrie, you know, I'm almost um, ashamed to bring this up, you know, as an American, like, oh, you know, why don't we have a more just place? Why don't we have gender equity? Why don't we have uh, uh, racial equity in this country? And this is also a very big part of our forum today, which is to look at what we need to do to unblock uh, a talent that has been demeaned or has been left on the side of the table. Part of this gender equity, I know it's a concern of yours, and I'd love to hear you know, how Amazon is, is taking gender equity seriously. Absolutely. Well, I mean, first and foremost, uh, we always want to value, you know, the safety and the equity of everyone we work with in our own operations, in our fulfillment network, in our offices here, throughout all of what we do at Amazon, and then in all of our value chains. So one of the things I can share with you um, in how we're doing that, we just committed to the women's empowerment principles that are run by the UN, which really, uh, you know, give corporates guidance on gender equity, but also uh, are a way to lead forward and show that we're fully committed. Um, and we've also committed to uh, $1 million to the Resilience Fund for uh, women in global value chains, which looks at how do we build capacity of organizations on the ground who are addressing some of the most critical issues that women are facing around the world. But we're fully committed to this and have been since day one through our leadership principles at Amazon. Um, we, you know, we think that scale and size bring a broad responsibility to these issues. And we look at sustainability very holistically across both our commitment to the environment and to addressing climate change with urgency, but also to addressing uh, global human rights or our global human rights principles and our supply chain codes of conduct. So we're working at the intersection between those social and environmental issues, and it's incredibly important that we really do both. Let me ask you, I, just to, to wrap up, a, 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 again, an unfair question perhaps, but you know, when you were working at Business for Social Responsibility, which, which you did, and I have a lot of respect for that organization, you were working for the Sustainability Coalition now at Amazon. I'm sure you work with people who are not so enlightened as yourself, you know, who did not necessarily come with a map of how to treat everyone, you know, equally. I mean, you know, those particular organizations were great, but you had, you know, encounters. And I'm just sort of interested as we sit here at this very important moment um, with a toxic political culture in this country, with a, with, in the United States, and I know you're global, but I'm just interested in how we um, develop empathy, mutual understanding, over the importance of these issues so that um, something like gender equity becomes natural that we flow towards and not a lift. Does that make any sense? 
Well, certainly, I think if we're not treating all people equally, if we're not um, combating the day-to-day -day racism we see in the United States and around the world, um, we're not doing our job, you know, as a as a company and as a leader. And so that's top priority for us is to make sure that all people are protected, are safe, are feel valued and are treated equally. And with that um, becomes actually a place where people are attracted to want to work. So we could not grow and hire as much as we are if we were not able to attract people in and, and held those values so dearly as we do. So I think first and foremost, it's about saying that's an absolute minimum bar standard. And beyond that, where are we going to talk as a leader to lean into you know, what we're doing and share more again with others about how we're doing this, um, where we're investing in our value chains, where we're creating new practices and policies within our own operations. So I think that you know when you know better, you do better. And so by sharing what we're doing, we're hoping um, others might be inspired by that leadership and um, that it's absolutely a part of how any company needs to operate at this point. Well, look, I'm just very grateful to talk to you. I've been a fan. I've known about your organizations and other in the past. And I just think, you know, setting the right tone and inspiring by example are so important as we deal with these issues, particularly in the ESG area, which ESG are still three letters that a lot of Americans don't know yet. And so part of telling these stories, having show and tell uh, about setting that important tone and taking actions is so important. So Kara Hurst, ed, head of Worldwide Sustainability at Amazon, it's really great speaking with you. I hope you'll come back. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Steve. Well, that brings us to the end of our program today. A very big thank you to all of our speakers and all of you attendees for joining us. It's an important subject. I love these conversations. For any of you who missed this, we're going to have the video up of this entire event up on our website shortly. I'm Steve Clemens. Be well.